Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and welcome to Weekly Svelte. In this Weekly Svelte, we're going to be talking about around 10 or so UI libraries for Svelte. These are going to be awesome libraries that you can use to get a jump start on your project. Many of these are themable, some of them are not, some of them are good basis, and some of them are meant to be taking over the entirety of your UI. But before we get into that, I do want to talk about the Level Up Tutorials summer sale that's going on right now. We have a big summer sale where everything is 50% off in terms of the yearly subscription and our 10 most popular courses, all 50% off. This is the type of sale that comes around uh, once or twice a year. And this is a good opportunity to get in at a price before we launch our massive redesign and increase our prices. So if you want to get in now and check out some of the content that we have, you'll want to head on over to leveluptutorials.com and see everything that we have to offer. There's a new course every single month and sometimes even more than one new course. In fact, last month we released command line essentials and WordPress for beginners. We'll be releasing some amazing content coming later this month, but we also have some awesome stuff. If you want to learn about browser APIs, Svelte in 3D, real time remix with Superbase. So you can write a React app using Remix and Superbase to build a real chat app in real time. Uh, also, Keystone with Amy Dutton, Remix for Everyone, Svelte Kit, Accessibility for Everyone. The amount of courses goes on and on and on, and we continue just adding next level content every single month to the site. So if you want to get in now, head on over to leveluptutorials.com, sign up for the year and become a pro. Not only that, but you'd be helping support the free content that we're putting up on YouTube all the time as well. So with that out of the way, let's talk about UI libraries. Now, I came across this Svelte Headless UI, which is a newer UI library. And this one works well with Tailwind, but Tailwind is not required for it. But when I saw this, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should do a deep dive on UI libraries. And I found about 10 good ones. And if you have some that are not on this list, then please go ahead and share them in the comments. So the first one is Svelte Headless UI. And you can see that this is basically a library for building composable components that have a lot of really great things going for them. Now, I don't use Tailwind myself, so I would probably go with the unstyled version, but the styled version of this thing includes a really nice looking UI kit. For instance, the dialog here, we have a modal. We have open dialog. Got it, thanks. And this thing has some options in here. It, it has the ability to have a close button and all those things that you might like. It has some styling information. One thing I really like here is the docs are really good. They have a lot of great examples. They show all of the props in a table like you'd want. And just overall, really nice, uh, really nice kit here. Now you can see also they have like an accordions that they're calling a disclosure. They have a nice looking list box, a nice looking menu box, a nice looking popover. There we go. Like what you see on maybe like um, stripes navigation. Um, we have a radio group that is looking like much better than your standard radio buttons. A switch. Everybody's got to have a switch. Um, this is a component that just about every site uses. Tabs that look nice. Look at all this stuff. And even a transition component, you know, I'm not sure about this transition component. I'd probably just rather use Svelte's own transition stuff, but hey, this thing exists. Now, this is Svelte Headless UI, and I'll make sure I have the links to all of this stuff in the descriptions of this video, but it's a, it's a really nice sized library. And it's been, like I mentioned that it just came across my desk, but it's not entirely that new. You know, there are some commits in the last month, but it's been around for a little bit. Uh, so neat library to check out. Next one here is going to be Svelte UI, 40 customizable components. So this one features quite a bit more. Uh, but, you know, many of these things, there's there's different levels of how much you want to buy into a framework here or a UI kit. So, for instance, we have all these different ones. We have core, composables, motion, prism, dates, and preprocessors. Now, I don't I'm, I'm not sure about some of these things, but I do like the fact that they give you a ton of different components. And here, let's open up the layout components. We have the app shell. We have a container. So this is going to kind of give you, you know, padding and margin on here. We have a centered group where it centers everything. We have a group. 
we have a simple grid, a space, and a stack. Now, these differ from the last one, where these layout components are much more like what you would have with classes. Now, some people would want to do this with just straight up CSS, but other people do like this way of writing classes or components. In fact, I have a series of layout components that I wrote myself that are kind of similar to these, so I can totally get uh, the want to, to use something like this. In fact, if you've ever used React Native, some of their components for um, you know, flex views and stuff like that, they, it's really nice to have. Next is going to be the app or action icon here where you can choose the size of the icon, although it didn't look like that changed it, the radius, the hover, you can have um, different versions of this icon. And this is kind of like a button, right? It's called an action icon, but it's it's a button really. And that's neat. Um, you can see all of the different variants. Like this looks really great. You can get this thing looking really nice. And it seems like the color story here is that the colors are all in a nice system for you already. So you don't have to develop that yourself, which is always great. And likewise, we have buttons where you have the color palette already picked out for you. You can choose whether it's disabled, compact, so you have a little mini button, uppercase, we want a ripple, so when you click on it, like this is a fully formed library. And this thing might be a little bit harder to customize now because they're doing so much for you, but most of this stuff looks great. So if you just want something you can drop in and have all of these primitives, build your entire app with this stuff, this is a good option. Number input, switch, uh, you know, I can't go over all of these because there's like 40 of them. But as you see here, what we get into is a whole lot of stuff where you have um, navigation components, SEO component, I don't know why you need an SEO component. Svelte has that built in, but hey, whatever it exists, a badge, a card, an image, a KBD, which is a display keyboard button, okay, um, and theme icon. We have a loader. We have a skeleton component for if you want to build skeleton loading screens. There's also things like overlays for if you want to do a overlay, a tooltip, Affix, I don't know, a render Svelte component inside a portable at a or portal at a fixed location. Sure. OK, typography, code, title type. There's so much stuff here. Dividers, paper, popper, portals, Svelte render, <laughs> server, server render, fragment. Sure. I don't know why you need a fragment either. Fragment lets you group list without adding extra DOM nodes. Uh, fragments let you group a list of children. You can do that in Svelte by default. So I don't know, whatever. <laughs> there's also, you can, there's also a fragment built into Svelte. So not quite sure about those. Either way, there's some, either some other ones, some, they're calling it UI composables, but these look like actions to me where you're, you're, you're writing actions, uh, Svelte UI dates, which is not available. Preprocessors are not available. There's some motion stuff which comes in here, but again, I'm probably just gonna stick to the Svelte core stuff. Either way, this is Svelte UI. Now, next up is another one that looks really nice here. And this is 49 components with more to come, stylable with SAS, custom colors, fonts, and shadows. And it's pretty small, 40, uh, 57, KB G zipped, and this is called a uh, attractions, a pretty cool UI kit. If we look at the docs for this one, I think I'm going to head straight into the components themselves and we won't go through all of these, but you can see, um, oh, this is interesting related components. I like want to click on that right away. An autocomplete component where I would imagine you type and it starts to give you a uh, auto completion. That's neat. A badge, breadcrumbs, buttons. I always go for the buttons because I like buttons. Um, I like to see what people are doing for buttons. That's a nice X button. There's a lot of great stuff in this one, and this one seems to me a little bit more well-designed and practical. Um, there's not too much here, but there is a lot of stuff. A dot, what's a dot? Oh, it's just a dot, okay. Drop down, file zone, file input. Ooh, the drop zone looks nice. Now this one to me feels, the, the the nice thing about this library feels like it's really well designed and maybe you'll want to customize it, but I think part of the benefit of this one is just how good it looks out of the box. Like look at the star rating. You can customize the colors and all sorts of like minor properties of this thing, but I don't know how much you're going to want to tweak this from the way it looks. I mean, maybe you will, but if, for the most part, everything looks really super good. Okay. Next up is Smelt. Now, Smelt is a UI framework built on top of Tailwind and Material Design Spec. 
it comes with many components. And if we look at these components, you can see this is very like, um, it's like the polymer style, the, um, you know, material design one where you get the ripples and the buttons and it looks nice. Uh, this again, maybe would be better for like a toolkit. If you're building something like this site where you just want to say like you take over the style, maybe I'll choose the colors and whatever, but this one feels way less, um, this one feels more like you're trying to implement material design and that's why you would use it. So this is Smelt, they got a fun little logo here, but if you wanna use material design, especially the style of material design, this seems like a great option. You have a lot of really nice little uh, utilities here. Gotta love that ripple, right? Next up is going to be the Svelte strap, which is going to be Bootstrap 5 components. Now Bootstrap isn't something that a lot of people have been reaching for lately, but look, there's a ton of components here. They're very configurable, it's really nice, and you don't have to implement Bootstrap in a customized CSS class way. You get full on components, you get the icons, the nav bars, all of the stuff that you'd expect, and it's just going to work. We get some toast messages, some tool tips, some tables, and all that good stuff. So this is Svelte Strap. And I'm sorry if I'm breezing through some of these ones right here. I, I honestly, I think um, some of my favorite ones are the first ones we covered, but these are all good options as well. Next up is going to be Svelma. Svelma is Bulma Components for Svelte. This is Bulma Components. If you're into the Bulma uh, UI, then this is going to be a great option for that because it allows you to implement the Bulma UI, which is a tailwind kind of alternative in a way that is a full on components where you get things like all of that. Like this, you're seeing the same kind of components over and over again, but it's good to evaluate these things based on what you want. Like this one doesn't have, you know, 60 components or whatever, but it has the stuff you need, whether that's forms, dialogues, modals, tabs, uh, accordions, those types of things, toast, tool tips. So this is a great option. These things look really good, especially if you like this style of the Bulma style, the buttons and everything, the inputs, gotta have a nice looking toolkit like this. All right, so that's Svelma. Next one is going to be Svelte Atoms. Svelte Atoms is a UI library based on the Atoll de design system. A library uh, is in development, so, you know, a lot of these things are in active development, but you get uh, you get these blocks, different levels of shadows, pop-ups, alerts. You get, oh, this is really nice actually. These buttons look really good. Uh, you get loading buttons, different kinds of states. The check boxes look good. All of this stuff to me looks really nice. I haven't seen this design system before myself, but it's nice that you get all of this stuff. The container loader, these drop zones look great pop-ups, inputs, icons, icon buttons. Ooh, yeah, look at these icon buttons. Ooh, yeah, those look good. These icons even look good. I like that they use the alien icon. We're getting into some alien theme stuff on Level Up Tutorials for right now. So uh, I'm always checking out everybody's alien icons right now. Radio buttons, we got progress pop-ups, pagination, tables, all sorts of cool stuff. All sorts of cool stuff in this one. This is Svelte atoms and again the api just looks really nice right all of the apis for these feel very nice this one is a Svelterial, which is a material ui uh components and i show you the github for this one because um th there's is using like a storybook and this feels fine right i like storybook it's fine uh, but it does feel like maybe a little bit harder to browse these docs than it would be normal docs so this is if you're wanting ooh ooh maybe hit hit this with a refresh i don't know about I don't know about storybook. There's a reason why I'm building a storybook alternative for myself. Um, but either way, you get some options here. And these things are if you're looking to implement material design. I might stick to the other one here that we looked at. It was the... Um, smelt, if you're looking for straight up material design. But this, this one does have a lot of material design uh, options here as well. I mean... It implements everything very nicely. Again, you're just going to have to deal with storybook here and trying to navigate through this. Now, next up is one that is an agnostic UI library. This is called agnostic UI, which means that it can work with all sorts of different things. And in fact, you'll see this one as being an option for React, Vue, Svelte, Angular. And <laughs> this is actually very funny. This like being able to see the same thing in all these different like look at this React stuff. I don't know. Okay, so in Svelte, you have just import 
agnostic. You're importing the CSS and then you're importing the button and then you can use the button and it has a mode property. Now, a lot of this stuff is of particular importance to me because I'm working on our own design system and maybe I'll open source it, maybe I won't, but um, just seeing how people are designing their buttons and all that stuff right now is, is of particular importance to me. Let's look at the docs here for this one. This is going to be a little bit more complicated to browse because it's not just only Svelte. So whenever you look at the Svelte documentations or the framework components, like if we select this component, it's more about like, what does this component look like? And then you got to go hunt down the Svelte source for this to see exactly how you use this thing. But this is nice because if you're using this framework, uh, the big benefit of a agnostic framework like this is that you are, um, not stuck into one ecosystem, right? Like if I wanted to move somewhere else with my component library, I'd have to relearn a whole new system. But if I wanted to stay with Svelte or if I wanted to move to React or whatever, I would only have to learn this stuff once. It's not like you're getting to reuse all the same code, but you would at least be able to take with you the ideas behind it. And so this is one option for agnostic UI components. And these things are themable. They look good. They don't in my mind, they're they're not like incredible looking, but they look good. Uh, you also get a lot of different components. Like, look, a lot. There's a lot of stuff here. And many of these things are things that you'll need everywhere. So this is a nice option if you're looking for something like this. If you're using this, I would say these are probably meant to be themed on top of this because this to me doesn't exactly read super well. Um, I would probably want to tweak this one quite a bit. Now, another option for this same style is Framework 7. Now, Framework 7 is interesting. Now, I've, I had never heard of this until recently. Build full desktop featured, yes, get started, whatever. This thing feels much more like it's trying to do a lot for you. And there's a reason why I'm showing you this one at the end, because this one feels like a lot. Um, and if you want to use this thing in Svelte, you can, let's see, introduction. The Framework 7 Svelte plugin provides Framework 7 elements and components and integration of the Framework 7 router to render pages in the Svelte way. So if you are implementing this library, you are implementing this thing. This is a commitment here where, like, for me, I'd much rather use SvelteKit and drop in a UI library at, at my own leisure, where this thing definitely wants to take control of your application so that you can build applications that feel like native apps. And you're, it's it's going to be different, difficult to get, like, here's, here's what this looks like on the web. It's going to feel difficult to get this kind of, like, full control without having this kind of full control, given that this is a whole thing, right? This is a whole system. But it does, the reason why I did include it on this list at all is that it includes a ton. Oh, man, I hate that it's scrolling me back up to the top whenever I click one of these. Uh, it includes a ton of components with a ton of options. This thing is massive, and it's massive in a way that it requires... Oh, that's kind of funny how it takes so long to show you what they look like. It requires a lot of buy-in. So if you're in the type of person who's like, I want to have this thing look like a mobile app and I want to have this take over my entire dev process, essentially, then this is something you'll want to look at. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend diving into this just because you want a UI library. But I felt like it's a good idea to include it considering how um, how massive it is and how many different items there are for you to see in here. Again, I, I, I wish this was better to browse because it makes really showing this thing off kind of painful. Um, but either way, look at that. Menu items, they work. This is the iOS version. This is the web version. You'll see it looks the exact same. And yeah, these things look nice and they work fine. Um, but all in all, like I said, this thing's going to be taking control. So these are 10 or so UI libraries that I think will uh, give you some abilities to get the hit the ground running with your applications. Now, keep in mind, I mean, we're building for the web here. You can drop in a CSS framework here at no cost as well. We personally, we're writing our own element system of which maybe I'll detail in another one of these weekly spells or maybe even a level up code blog video. But that's it for us. I highly recommend subscribing to Level Up Tutorials if you want to learn Svelte. We have a massive amount of Svelte content on the site and uh, Svelte 3D, Svelte Kit, Building Svelte Components, Animating Svelte 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. There's, there's almost like 140 Svelte tutorial videos on this site and there'll be only more with time considering I'm working on a Svelte and Supabase tutorial series right now at this very second. So as always, check it out. Let me know what you think. 
subscribe to Level Up Tutorials, support the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.